To create the lining for the bag, you're going to need some 10 ounce canvas that you will cut down to size. I start with a rough cut and then I um, cut it again as I continue the project. It's at this point that I will cut off any of the patches that are hanging over the edge of the um, dimensions of the bag. I'm now going to sew the pocket piece. I use a scrap of the canvas, um, the same canvas as the lining, and I cut it approximately seven inches by six inches. I fold down the top. I double fold it a quarter inch over twice and stitch along the top. If you have a label, this is a good spot for you to add your label. Um, this is where I add my brand's label as well. Now I'm going to add the pocket. I place it in the middle between the two sides and center it about two and a quarter to two and a half inches from the top. I fold the three sides under about a quarter of an inch, pin it into place, and then stitch all around. Now it's time to cut the webbing. I use one inch wide webbing, it's cotton, and I cut two strips 36 inches long. So now I'm going to center the straps on the exterior of the bag, placing them at about one third in from each side. I pin the handles on both sides and then I place the canvas lining right sides together on top of the exterior. I use clips to clip the exterior, the lining, and the handles all together. It's at this point I can see if I need to make any adjustments to either the exterior or the canvas lining. Like in this case, the lining's just a little bit big, so I will cut it down slightly. So back at the machine, I am now going to sew using a half inch seam allowance along both short edges. Um, and I will backspace over the straps just to reinforce it a bit. After securing the straps, I fold the lining and the exterior in half, having them meet at the center where I can either pin or clip them in place. And then I sew using a half inch seam allowance along the long edges. On one of the lining sides, I do leave a gap of about six inches to turn the bag 
right side out. After sewing the sides, we're going to box the corners. What I do for this is create a triangle with the side seam in the middle, and then my corners I want to box at about five and a half inches, so I use a water soluble pen and just mark the line on all four corners the two corners of the exterior and the two corners of the lining. At the sewing machine, I sew across the lines that I just marked, and then I use my scissors and cut those corners off with about a quarter inch seam allowance. Now I'm going to turn the bag right side out using that six inch gap in the lining um, from a few steps ago. This takes a little bit of time. It can be fiddly, but just work with it and everything will work out. Now it's time to sew that gap shut. The seam allowance sort of naturally just closes up that gap and then you can finger press it or use some pins or clips to hold it in place.
When you get to the machine, you can sew the gap closed at about an eighth or a sixteenth, as close to the edge as you feel comfortable. The last step is the top stitching around the upper edge of the bag. I work the lining into the bag. I don't want it to peek over from the front, so I use clips or pins to work that into place. Also make sure your handles are going up as if they're going to be resting on a shoulder. You don't want to stitch the handles down onto the bag. When I top stitch, I like to stitch at about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. I also lengthen my stitch length to a four. Um, I think it's a nice stitch length for top stitching. And there you have it, a completed tote bag.